Thank you. <clears throat> I'm Roger Glass, director of the Fogarty. I was absolutely delighted by this presentation. And when I was invited four years ago to speak at Rice, I never talked to bioengineers. I knew nothing about engineering. I resisted going. And I came away absolutely fascinated with what Rebecca Richards Cordham has done. So I applaud what you're doing. I mentioned in my talk that our Fogarty Scholars and Fellows programs are open to a broader group of biomedical scientists, and that includes engineers. So as I hear these presentations and the enthusiasm of both the undergraduate engineers who have overseas ideas and projects, or the graduate programs like your biodesign, uh, our fellows program is open uh, to these candidates. And I work very closely with Dr. Rod Pettigrew at the National <laughs> Institute of Bioimaging and Bioengineering, who's also interested in the global health agenda. And we're partners on this. So it's an offer to you to f identify candidates who could benefit from a year of either undergraduate but mentored research in an overseas site uh, on, a, on a, a competitive project, or, or postdocs who want to spend a year in the field playing with these devices and bringing them, uh, uh, testing them. So I applaud this. I thought it was a wonderful presentation by all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Do I need, do I need the mic? Or? Uh, well, well, I think the mic is only for the camera. We can all hear you, but uh, Jacqueline will pass the mic, I think. Thank you. <clears throat> OK, I'm Flora Katz. Uh, co Coincidentally, also from the Fogarty International Center. Um, all of you spoke about the importance of interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary collaborations, and then you can't get through the valley of death alone and so forth. But you actually have two different models, um, and I, I'd like you to comment on that. One of them, you created your device, and now you're looking for the business innovation and, and the other. Um, you know, the other expertise that you need to help you translate it. And in the other, at the Biodesign Center, you actually start with the team at the beginning. You think, I think, about the implementation and the business model at the stage of design. And you don't even start until you've, as I understand it, until you've identified the problem, the solution, the barriers, how you're going to overcome them, and so forth. So I just wonder, as an um, educational model, where do you think the transdisciplinary um, collaboration or aspect should come in. Anyone want to answer that? Uh, I'll have a few to say, but a few things to say. But, uh, but uh, just yeah. to, to open, I, th I think that there are cases, as, as described at the work at Stanford, where you see a long list of things that are coming from the actual complexity of, of delivering healthcare, and and I couldn't read everything that was on the list, but but I mean I think it ranged in, in scale uh, based on what I was able to see. And, and, and that comes from the, I, I'm assuming, from the actual clinical operations. Um, some of the things that I was talking about are problems that are just pretty well known. We're, we really need to get better at disinfecting water using methods other than chlorination, for example, in the developing world. It's been out there for quite a while as a problem statement, but the solution domain wasn't there until there were material advances to try to plug in. So I think it may be that, that just in coming from different problems. Some problems may be recognized more in the near term or recently, and some problems have been lingering for quite a while. And I think that may be the difference between the, the, the approach, for example, that was illustrated between our two presentations. I don't know if you'd like to comment on that. Yeah. Uh, Paul, Catherine, do you want to say something? Yeah. Yeah. Is this on? Is, it's on. OK, great. Yeah, I just wanted to, to, to say a little bit more about so so we built this thing but i have found that as as an engineer working in the laboratory that you get a lot more traction from an idea if there's actually something that someone can put their hands on and if that <laughs> reaction is i'll never use that that's insane that's fine because what that leads to in my experience next from the students and from the the people that you're you're you're, you're engaging is is new ideas and different ideas and better ideas. And so I, I like to think in the classes that I teach and in some of my own work that prototyping, whether it's working prototype or whether it's just you know a piece of paper with a string on it that <laughs> represents what something's going to be or look like is really a touch point for um, spreading innovation beyond you know our laboratory and our little uh, brainstorming group. So that, that's, that's why you know we went 
and, and made this, once we knew it would work, why we went ahead and made, made it um, this far so that we could show people how it would work and we could think about you know, other ways that it could possibly be used that, that we haven't thought about. But, yeah. just, just two words. Um, boy, that's a great question. <laughs> uh, I wish there was a single answer to it, and I think the answer is there isn't one answer. Um, I think if all the problems were neatly laid out in a role, you know, the list of the six problems, and all we had was the six problems, yeah. you would crush the creativity of the bright young people who just come up with great ideas by what's, with seeing what's in front of them. I know that there are several models that have been set out there. For example, the Coulter Foundation, visibly trying to generate, you know, biomedical engineering technologies out there. Their formula was put together a doctor with an engineer, you know tie them at the hip for a while and don't let them apart and at the end of some period they will have a commercial product ready to go. It's not a bad model. It doesn't work every single time. I think in all these endeavors you're going to have some hits and some misses and you're always going to find that nothing that we do is going to advance linearly and any cool new technology takes about 20 years to get out there in the commercial world so you know uh, I, I wish there was a perfect answer. I think, you know, Paul Yock had a great model for what they're doing down yeah. at Stanford, and he's got this really heavy book that you can buy. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Which will teach you an enormous yeah. amount. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I think different models for different groups of people. Yeah. Uh, just to add to that, I, I think it's a great question, too. No question about this. This is a fundamental question, actually, if we're talking about any interdisciplinary work, and in this particular case, uh, more than any other. Um, no matter what, what approach you adopt, I think one of the things that is very helpful uh, is to have viewpoints from all the stakeholders from the beginning. Whether you go through this process of doing the needs finding and, uh, and prioritizing and so on, uh, or, or not, sometimes you have a glaring problem in front of you, like the water problem. It is a glaring problem that needs to be solved. But I think even in those circumstances, I think it, it would be helpful uh, to have the viewpoints and inputs, and I think the collaboration of all the stakeholders involved. Because sometimes the solution you, uh, you come up with is wonderful in a technology in itself, but it, uh, it's uh, implementing the technology which is uh, the point of uh, failure. So whether it's administrative, whether it's financial, whether they're cultural, there are many other issues that need to be brought into the picture. And I think the earlier you do it, the, the more you increase your chance of success. I'm, I'm sorry if I could just comment also that one of those stakeholders are going to be you know, a large stakeholder, the people in the country yes. with whom you want to implement it, and yes. where you source your materials from, how you're going to dispose of them, whether they're strong enough to do the bicycle pump, and all of those things yes. um, are, are really going to impact your design. But Yeah, no, absolutely. Yes, question in the back there, and then, and then you next, yeah. 